Back in the day, having natural hair defined you, confined you, and limited you. There was less people feeling liberal, there, were less, well, there was less empowerment, and there was just more oppression in every sense. Your hair's got kink. Um, you know, if, if a pen can't go through or slide through, your hair, you're less human. The, the more coarse your hair was, the darker your skin. In my community in general, like, you're conditioned to straighten your hair from a very young age. We've always been made to believe that straight hair is the best hair. If you even look now at, like, the amount of weaves that women are wearing, especially in South Africa, like, it's, it's, we're just naturally conditioned that straight hair is better hair. So I mean, I've had straight hair for 19 years of my life. I, I had never, ever, ever experienced my afro my whole life. I even come from a home where straight hair is believed to be better um, and easier to maintain. And even now with, with my afro, like my, I still deal with like my mom who, who feels like you need to like, you need to fix your hair and all because um, it's messy or it's not what like what it's supposed to be. Me uh, deciding to like stop um, relaxing my hair and straighten it was almost like the start of like a whole new chapter of like I, I, I feel like it was the period where I became more of an activist and like I, became, I started to have more confidence in who I am and be sure of who I am. Since I got here, I know white people are white people, colored people are colored people, black people are black people. That's your race, that's what stands on your ID. Colored people, they're like, well, way more diverse. You get, um, like you can see even you get dark skin colored people, you get light skin colored people, you get colored people who looks like who looks black like Tosa or Zulu people, and you get colored people who look super white. So we are super diverse.
during the apartheid days to make sure that you are colored. If they weren't sure about your race, um, if you were way too fair, because like I said, colored people also sometimes you can mistake them for white people. So back in the day, what they would do is they would take a pencil. This is what we would do in grade nine in history class. So our history teacher told us they would take a pencil, they would stuck it into your hair if they're not sure. And then they would like see if the pencils fall out, which means you're straight and silky, they would be like, okay, you're white, right? And then if the pencil gets stuck in your hair, they would be like, okay, it's cruise, you call it. If you look at South Africa, um, in the colored community, like, straight hair is seen as seen as better more than all the other cultures like for them like having the curly hair can sometimes they they can they'll call it like grossara unless it unless unless the coils grow like perfectly it can be seen as like like it's rough it's not like the good hair what I've noticed about my kids in class, in the classroom, um, many of them um, are not so privileged or I would say they don't have a straight hair. The, their moms always um, play there or, or like, yeah, make it up. Um, so the one with the straight hair um, has more, um, I would say, gets the attention mm -hmm. and they would um, make her import, feel important because it's all about her hair now, and they would play with her hair and do styles with her hair because um, her hair is more um, straight than, than this. So, yeah, I want to embrace my natural hair and show them um, that they, them, their moms can also do this to, to their hair or the type of hair that they have. Yeah, but yeah, but like legit, I'm gonna say again, amongst the color community, hey, plays such a huge role and it really divides us even, it, it divides women. People, like even if a guy comes home with a girl with straight hair, they'll be like, mm hmm you got you a nice girl with good hair and now our jeans is gonna be good. So yeah, our grandkids is also gonna like, like, you know what, colored people even, legit, this is the truth. When the hair, when the kids hair, or when, the, when you, when I'm pregnant now and I, and I go into labor and like my kid is one day or two days old, and I'm gonna show L'Oreal a photo of my kid. Maybe not L'Oreal percent, but someone else. They will look at the hair and they'll be like, that's the first thing. That's how what, such a huge role um, hair plays amongst colored people. They will look at the hair and be like, ooh, it seems like it's gonna be coarse, no? Or ooh, it seems like it's gonna be straight. practical for like the past three years so I've seen the school rules about afro and braids and things like that and because of previous incidents especially in our country um, Pretoria girls I and they were sent home they were told they're not allowed to come to school until their hair is not fixed and the schools are now more aware of the cultural differences when it comes to me um, and the way you wear it but they consider a norm of beautiful hair and pretty hair, they still wear I think it's, it's, it's a society thing where it's expected of, you know, kids with curly and coarse hair to have it straightened and neat and, you know, not in its natural form because, because of the, the stereotype that it looks unneat. I've, I've seen a lot of parents chemically relaxed, like toddlers hair, like as kids. Because um, they are like kids relaxers in the shop as well that are obviously a bit less harsh and you know trying to be a bit more sensitive to the skull but I mean it's still chemicals so yeah I've seen that I've seen that a lot and I think 
with my mom as well. She she knows relax, you know, damages your hair and she still does it. Black people, black girls, um, they wear weaves like every day. For them, it's not like a, a, a special for special occasions or what what. Even though, like for example, this lady got beautiful long hair, she will she will plait her hair and wear a weave every day, which will end up breaking her hairline, and then she end up have to cut her hair short, start from fresh. Black people, you can even see the kids. They get excited when they see a, a white person. You can be colored, you can be, you can be white, you can be Jewish, you can be like whatever. Mm. As long as you fair skin, to, like um, we get we get excited. We love living like white people. That's the thing. We become so westernized, you know, in, like in Kayamandi, to the point whereby we even like trying to imitate like. A, I don't think if I decide to wear a weave or a wig, now I'm officially this wannabe white person. We all know that the minute you have natural hair, you really aren't all that, especially being reversing, um, having to reverse time. Um, it was, you know, it wasn't necessarily, you weren't seen as attractive, or secretly you were, which is why, you know, we were slaves and the masters would sleep with us, who were damn well attractive, but it, it was, it was a shame. And I, I don't blame certain people for still feeling that shame, because it takes a lot. It, I mean, it took me such a long time. I had to admire people who had afros and be like, actually, I want my hair to be natural. I'm ready to not put relaxer on my hair and not to pretend that I've got straight hair. I don't have to have straight hair, actually, for that matter to feel beautiful and this flippant relaxer is damaging my beautiful head. My personal revolution with my hair started when I was 17. Cut off my hair, I, I didn't want to be bold, but that's what happened. And I was sad about this, but it happened. It had to happen, I guess. And my hair started growing. If I had not cut my hair when I was 17, I wouldn't know that my natural hair is actually so beautiful.
My name is Confi and welcome to my hood. I grew up in Kaimandi. I live in town now, but I grew up in Kaimandi. This is my home. And this place is called Emalasheni, which means colds. During weekends, this place is quite filled with a lot of people from Kaimandi, also coming from other townships, just to have fun, listen to music, to dance, to have meat. When people come here, it's, they actually dress up. They dress to the fullest capacity. Their hair is on point, sometimes here. For the club or the television, your body. Sure, you know, no set to me, you carry if it kill somebody. You know, I feel a vibe, you feel a vibe, so baby, why not buy me? Yeah. And I know you shy, but it's yeah. cool. I'm gonna make it. I know what's in that, you go high, but what's up? Jedu, Jedu, I'm gonna go to the night, my wife's a woman, my mom. amazing so I feel like it's a lot of double standards and people now are actually realizing that you know rocking my natural hair is is okay it's fine and I think when you say that um, relaxes and stuff are dropping I, I, I really do think that um, natural hair products are, are starting to rise which is good because um, it's, it's 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 promoting self-love it's promoting self-care it's it's promoting, like, accepting your identity and who you are. Yeah, I have three weeks. I have the curly week and the bob and the slow one. So sometimes if I want to change weeks, I can put any week that I want. Oh. When I want to be... Like, when I want to go out, maybe. When you want to go out, you want to be sexy, you know? But it actually so going that. out is the long one, because when I dance, I want to shake my head, <laughs> and the kinky one. And then when you're at school, you need to be formal. The formal one is the bob. It's because you, it shows your face. With our hair, our own hair, we can do everything. There's no need for us to buy those expensive weave, expensive everything, expensive hair. With our own hair, we can do everything. Like, as for myself, I prefer my own hair. And I prefer, like, a girl with his own hair, natural girl. Miss South African, she was a, a, a young girl with his own natural hair. With own, so I, not, I like the natural person. So I prefer you do your own hair with, cause you can do everything with your own. You can do afro with afro. You can do dreadlocks. We can color them in pink. It's for girls. There are some girls who color them in pink. Everything. So there's no need to buy uh, Peruvian Brazilian things. Uh, it's too much. Yeah, most of the girls don't don't know that. But with our natural hair, yeah, we do. We we are like. We are shining, man. We have that thing you see, of saying, yeah, I'm a big person.
I started wearing braids at the age of three years old. The reason why I started wearing braids at such a young age, it was more convenient for my mom because my own needs a lot of maintenance when she need to plate it every morning or every second day. So braiding was less maintenance. So then she would braid my hair at least once a month and then I would have it in for a month and then I'll take it out and then she put in braids again. So this is me. I was like three years old here. Yeah. This is when I started wearing braids. I actually stopped wearing braidings on primary school. You used to get these used days to tell you like it's rose or plastic hair. Um, and then when I got on like to high school grade eight, now I started straightening my hair and blow it and I didn't want to do in I didn't want to have to do anything with braids and then grade eleven I only started wearing braids again because now I was older and I knew like obviously it's not rosy. My hair is not braided now at the moment because um, I'm going to braid it tomorrow. I'm giving it like room to braid, like for a month I didn't have braids in because sometimes if you put in braids back to back, your hair can, like it damages your hair because sometimes it's a bit heavy on your hair and it's a bit too much for your hair. So that's the reason why I haven't had braids in for like a month now. So tomorrow we're going to Karamandi and then that is where I'm going to do my braids. Um, unfortunately in Petersville we don't have salons where you can do your braids because here predominantly people are blow drying the hair still, straightening it and people mostly do their hair at home here. Why is everyone closed? Shit, man. Are we gonna go back to Clutisville? It's not like we can do my hair in Clutisville. Okay, man, it's my only option. I accidentally found my people. I've been saying that, yeah, like they lived and uh, you, I've been saying that I'm unhappy about starting over at the new salon because only one person has been doing my hair and that's how my hair has been growing and it's these people for the last year, no, for the last year. Okay. So tomorrow we're gonna, they're gonna come to my place and then we're gonna do my hair again. I'm so glad I found my people! <laughs> <Legit>. <laughs> It goes well, like with natural. Like nowadays, everyone is like it's best natural. Like eh, when it comes to these relaxing things, it's something else. It does more damage in your hair than keeping your hair natural. And it's a little bit cheaper. It's cheaper, of course, because with your natural hair, you'll just have to alter it, nothing else. Maybe one, once a month, and then it's okay. Now 
natural hair is just so much more effort to maintain and to keep just essentially is just a lot um, but you know some people braid their hair to just kind of like maintain the natural hair I also braid my hair times um, I try not to all the time because braids have a tendency of deteriorating the edges um, the same thing when you have wigs on it tends to chow the hairline because you, essentially you need to um, kind of like make your natural hair and braid it into condos so that the wig the wig can actually like sit properly on top of your head I like going natural like for two months now I haven't been doing anything on my hair only a foot which I bought maybe 30 rand if I, I keep it natural unfortunately I had to put this but I've got natural hair I maintain it very very nice because my hair is natural and I want to always keep it up to date make my hair into small bantu knots so that when I wake up in the morning I can basically untie my bantu knots and get ready to go for my day If you don't have a proper Peruvian wig or a Brazilian wig, you haven't made it in life in our society. People in our society nowadays take um, this um, braids color here for it's like modern fashion or something like that. And men, women, transgenders, mm -hmm. female, um, um, intersex, all types of um, human being wear it. It's not for just only for um, feminine. Or females, men also wear it. But uh, most of the time, I wear wigs because I'm transgender and I wear um like an inter um, gay show. So we normally wear wigs, but Brazilian wigs. company that um, um, gives tour guides to people so I had the privilege of meeting Brazilian women and they're absolutely beautiful and have absolutely be beautiful hair so I joked to them and I said to them hey do you know how guys how popular you guys are here in South Africa so it was a big joke and they're like no what are you talking about I'm like the hair that you guys sacrifice is actually hair that we go and purchase and you buy with an arm and a leg and they couldn't believe how dominated or whatever like how europeanized we were like we didn't embrace our africanism and it's quite sad because people love africa yeah. for the people that are in africa for what africa has for the difference that it's all about whereas now we're so dominated by europe and we just want to become like everybody else I'm not my hair, I'm not my skin, I am the soul that lives within. I am not my hair, I am not your skin, I am not your expectation.
journey for me I just feel like wherever I was in life my hair was different and hence why I have pinnacle moments in my life where I can be like ah oh, yeah when I was 13 or when I was a teenager I was like this and I can recall because my hair was also in a certain way the time when I started being more conscious about my hair and what I do with my hair was after high school I decided to have dreadlocks and um, it was a very indecisive decision and the reason I say so was because I didn't know what to do with my hair or where to go to with my hair so it was in a way being rebellious but also thinking into myself in that moment in time I cut my hair in 2018 in October and I thought that I was going to feel vulnerable without my hair because it was quite long and I was in a way vulnerable but I was so open with my vulnerability and so vocal about it and I actually embraced it and it, and it made me feel so empowered but this year I just decided to do braids um, to do a funky hairstyle because I'm funky and I love it. I was very surprised when I went home two years ago in the Eastern Cape to find such a majority of young people owning and wearing wigs and sometimes actually you'd find that they don't even own these wigs they borrow them or rent them from friends. Um, if you're from the, the township and you don't have a weave and you want to go out on a Friday or Saturday night to Rands, to Zoli's or whatever, you know, you're not up to standard and you're definitely not a slave queen. And if you can't afford something, then you feel pressure. And then there's the self-worthlessness that you feel because now you can't be a certain standard because you might not be able to afford. I feel that it's unhealthy and unhygienic to keep on, you know, to share wigs on a regular basis just because you're trying to keep up with society's standards of what is beautiful or what is acceptable. I felt the pressure of having a wig actually when it was graduation. I was so conflicted with the fact that I had a tight budget because I really wanted to have a nice dress. But the thing is, I sacrificed a nice dress for hair, which is quite weird. And um, at that time, I still had um, a, an, a re relaxed hair. I just recently changed my hair and it became a frill. So. Maybe for the past eight months now, I've been having an afro, but previously I had relaxed hair and I love my relaxed hair, but I couldn't go with my relaxed hair to my graduation or else I would just be basic, whatever, basic. and I, who wants to be basic for graduation, you know? So I did buy myself a 10 inch wig and um, yeah, but now I'm just like, oh, what was I thinking? Like. What was I thinking all this time? I have this beautiful hair that says so much about my heritage, says so much about me and where I come from. And ever since I got an afro, I have become more recognized. Like people will think I'm more attractive than I was with relaxed hair. People are like, oh my word, Zita, I didn't realize you had such beautiful hair or you were such a, you were such a pretty person like you are now. Yeah. Like before, you were just mediocre, you are just yeah. like everybody else. But now, your fro makes your beauty come out because you accepted who you really are. So, I'm proud of this. Why did you dye your hair like yellow on the side? It goes in December. Yeah. Every okay. December, everyone dyes their hair this color, no? blonde. Mm -hmm. 
what they should give us at school is kind of like self-confident classes where children are actually being empowered from a young age, being told that they actually do matter and like kind of like grooming them so that essentially when they do come to the age of being 13 and they have to go through puberty stage, they actually are confident about who they are in themselves. That is important for kids to know their self-worth. When I have kids one day, I'm not going to relax my kids. Eh? I'm not going to like blow the rights straight in it because oh, it used to be so super painful. Like you used to cry all the time when your parents do. Like you used to be scared when you know your hair is going to get done. You're going to be super scared because you know now they're going to burn you. They're going to put chemicals on your head and all of that stuff. But luckily my kids won't have to go through that now because they're going to know their own name, they're going to embrace it and they're going to love it. It's all about the language. Like when you have the language, you have the people's hearts. Yeah. And I guess it correlates with her because with Germaine, you know, it's okay for her to blow dry her hair and make it straight or to wear an afro or to do like certain styles. And for me, it's a norm. It's a norm to have braids. Just because I'm black, now I'm doing braids. Just because you are colored, and when you do braids, people insinuate that you are black. black. Suma, yeah. yeah. A lot of people insinuate that I'm black when I have in my parade. Sometimes I just go with it if I can understand. I'll be like, mm-hmm, yes. And sometimes I'm, I have to admit and be like, no, I don't understand, say again. So, yeah. So that's the thing with parades and the stigma and yeah. stuff. Especially in, in Clute as well. It used to have an ugly stigma, but like, let's say five years ago. But now it's a trend. I say now it's a fashion trend. It's and you know when something is a trend, when white people start doing it, yeah. when the Kardashians start, start doing thing. it, or when like a popular pop icon, you know, we all live in this pop culture. Everyone should look and act a certain way. But Everyone should have a nose ring because Tupac had a yeah. nose ring. Everyone should have tattoos because. You know, I'm scared it's just a trend and then a trend. What happens to the trend? It, it dies. I don't think it's a trend. I, th I think it's an awakening. If you look into history, Marcus Garvey, um, Steve Biko, Chris Ani, like Chimanande Ngozi, like they all speak about embracing your skin color. Miss Universe, look at how America is globalizing Lupita Nyong'o and she's one of the darkest of the dark, darkest girl in Africa and she's from Kenya. Like who knew that one day would look at Lupita Nyong'o and want to be like her? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad this is happening. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying I'm scared it's a trend. I feel like it's more about knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the more conscious you become, yeah. the more you start liberating yourself and liberating your mind and just embracing and loving and and this is only the beginning I, I i say this is only the beginning and trends will come and go straight hair will come and go if you want to have straight hair it will come and go but the essential message of the hair of the skin of of, of the culture of the language is more about here, fixing what's here, exactly. I mean Beyonce said it, pretty hurts, you know, it's the soul that needs, it's the soul that needs the, the remedy. Being vulnerable is scary, making you feel powerless, weak, and not exactly put together. If only this was not the case, and being this way was not fearful, where vulnerability teaches us powerful secrets about ourselves, helps us see them and touch them. So we learn the cracks, strongholds, and all revealed from what we are, to rediscover that Redefined does not mean perfection when vulnerability is concerned. That there is absolutely nothing wrong with feeling powerless and how being vulnerable is the most easiest way to heal, to victor, by overcoming our fears in the process of vulnerability. <laughs>